Alright, hey guys, uh, it's Robert, and I'm doing something today that was requested of me by uh, quite a few people, actually. Um, and that is to do something that's not just the normal mixology videos that I do, but more of kind of uh, bartending tutorials in general. And so I'm going to do a uh, kind of a bartending crash course for you guys. We'll see how it goes, but I basically just laid everything out and we'll get started and see what happens. So I have in here pretty much most of the gear that you can suspect to see as a bartender. Some of this is uh, more common than others in terms of what you'd be using it for. Uh, but all this stuff is bartending equipment, so I'll just go through each of them and talk about them. <clears throat> so I first will start with this. This is called a jigger. J-I-G-G-E-R. Jigger. And essentially all it is is a measuring cup. Just a very small measuring cup. It has kind of an hourglass design, and you'll notice that one side is bigger than the other. Uh, so this particular jigger has one ounce on this side, and one and a half ounces on this side. Now, a shot can be one or one and a half ounces, depending on who you're talking to. Generally, in my experience, a shot is one ounce, though. So a shot glass will usually be one ounce or one and a half ounces, but when you're pouring a drink, Usually, if you're saying one shot of something, it's it's one, one ounce. So, a lot of jiggers have uh, one ounce and two ounces. Uh, some have three-fourths of an ounce and a full ounce. They're all different. This one in particular has one ounce and 1.5 ounces. And you can tell that by the number up here. I don't know if you can see it. It says one for one ounce. And this says one and a half for one and a half ounces. Okay, so that's your jigger. Um, I'll show you a little bit more about how to use it later. There's a few different ways, but it's pretty straightforward. This next thing is one that you might not consider as being essential part to any gear, but I promise you it is. And that's a lighter. If you are bartending in a professional setting, like a bar, or a restaurant, or even some sort of banquet facility, it's very, very helpful to have a lighter. This is something that you probably won't use every night, but when you do need it, you'll be very happy that you have it, because either you're going to need to let someone borrow it to light their smoke, or there's going to be candles that need to be lit, or you're going to want to do something with the drink that involves a flame, and it's always helpful to have it on hand. And let me tell you, People that really, um, I'm not a smoker myself, I'll do an occasional cigar, but that's it. And I really uh, kind of have a strong aversion to smoking, but um, <laughs> somebody who does smoke and in that moment really wants a cigarette, you don't know how thankful they're going to be that you're the only person in the entire place with a lighter. And if they have some cash in their pocket, you better believe that I'll, it'll be yours after that. So, that's the lighter. Um, a lot of people don't consider uh, this when they first start bartending, but a knife is an essential part of your bartending gear. I really love these types of knives. They're from uh, this brand, Kuhn, Kuhn, something like that. It's a Swiss brand, I'm not sure how to say it. But all the knives, uh, they have a bunch of these, and they're called pairing knives. P-A-R-I-N-G, pairing. Um, they have a lot of different colors and, and kind of subtly different shapes of them, but they're pretty sharp, and they come with their own individual sheaths, which are really helpful if you're going to have it in a kit so it doesn't poke through your bag or cut anything else. Um, one thing that you'll find yourself needing to do a lot is uh, actually do some work with a knife. Uh, one of the main things you'll do with that is cut garnish. So. I'll show you how to do that right now, too. So, you've all seen uh, drinks with, you know, like a lime wedge hanging off the side of it, right? I'll show you how to do that. 
and this is something that you'll be required if you're in a bar to do very quickly and you'll probably do it before shifts so first you want to look at the lime if it's ugly looking like if it has any really messed up parts on the ends you might want to cut those off this one looks pretty okay then you're going to cut it in half uh, not this way but long ways so just cut it in half like that now this next trick is the part that uh, a lot of people don't realize so you're going to cut down the middle of this to give it a little notch to rest on the edge of the glass and uh, you gotta be careful with this this takes a little bit of practice because you don't want to poke all the way through the ear because if you do if you poke all the way through the hole when you cut it into pieces it'll just fall apart so you want to cut into the flesh but not all the way through you get used to it pretty quickly just like that see nothing on that side but we got a little gap there so that's the main part and then all you need to do is cut it into either three or four parts um, you can do this by laying it flat or you can do it vertically I usually do it flat so I just cut into it from one side flip it around cut into it from the other and then you have a couple lime wedges with a nice little notch there, so if I wanted to put it on a drink, boom. So same same thing you can cut from the top as well. <laughs> I messed that one up. That's why I prefer to do it laying down, but to each their own. Some people are better at one way or the other. show you the lemon I'm going to show you another tool this is called a channel knife because it's a knife in the shape of a little channel <laughs> right there you use this for garnish as well this is one that's not going to be as commonly used if you're working in a faster paced kind of high volume place if you're in a place where you focus more on uh, the quality of the drinks and really working slowly through them, you might end up using this for garnish. So maybe some restaurants or higher end bars. And the way it works is that you just take it in your hand like this and you pull back like this across and it gives you, it cuts in and gives you lemon zest. And if you're doing this, you want to do it over a drink like this. So the oils squirt into the drink. And then you can twist it and drop it in. There's another way to get twists without the channel knife though. They're not as nice, but usually this is what you'll see if you go to a bar is this method here. So what you want to do is cut off the ends of the lemon. Just like this. And this one's probably not going to work as well as uh, bigger lemons like you probably have at a bar or a restaurant. I just have these little ones because they're what I have on hand. But the idea here is that you want to cut into the uh, outside of the lemon, but not all the way down to the flesh. And you want to go all the way around. So little cut, little cut, little cut, little cut, little cut, leaving little strips. So I'll just do a few here. a 
bottle opener. This is really important to have on hand. A lot of times this will just be hanging out of your back pocket. Um, it's really fun to play with with a little loop here. You do some cool like uh, dog holiday stuff with it. <laughs> but um, this is what you use to open beers. It's very quick. A lot of times you'll hear it called a speed opener. Actually, let me go get a beer really quick. Part. 
part off. It's more than one way to skin a cat, or a wine bottle in this case. Okay, moving on, we have this. This is called a, a Hawthorne strainer, but usually you'll just hear it called a strainer. It's got holes in the top, and it has spring on the bottom. This is designed to put into a glass or a shaker and keep the ice from coming out. This is designed to catch small shards of ice and the liquid to pour into the drink after you shake it. I'll show you how to shake uh, and stir drinks in another section. But this is called a Hawthorne strainer. There's other types of strainers that are called tulip strainers that are basically like a, a rounded uh, metal slotted spoon with little holes in it and basically it doesn't have a spring and it's a similar function. This is a mesh fine strainer. Uh, this is for drinks that maybe have pulp or very fine ice crystals that you don't want in a drink. So you would strain and double strain with this so that everything gets caught in here. I've also uh, seen there's things called tea bag strainers, which are similar to this, but they're a little more droopy, and I think even a finer mesh. Same function, though. Um, lastly, we have, uh, well, second to last, we have citrus juicer. This is for juicing uh, lemons and limes. There's two sizes. There's like a lime-sized one and a lemon-sized one. You can really get away with just using a lemon-sized one for both. As long as it's big enough to fit in there, you're fine. Um, I'll show you how. So this isn't going to be perfect because we already mangled this lemon a little bit, but let me cut it in half. So when you cut it in half for juicing, you're going to do it the fat way, not the long way. Like day. 
so you're definitely going to want to have a shaker. Um, it might be helpful to bring your own pint glass just in case. So you have those two. Um, shaker, it depends. You don't necessarily need this a lot of places. If they want you to use them, they will have it. But if that's something you want to have, uh, you can definitely have it. It's always helpful to have around. And then a strainer. That's the bulk of it. Um, you're going to want a opener, a bottle opener, and a wine key. I would say that's the bare minimum. Going a step further, you might want the spoon and cutting board and knife. The rest of it, you can figure out. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, but this stuff is pretty much the essentials right here. So I'll be back in a minute when I do some uh, tutorial parts for you. All right, so the next thing that I want to show you is a little bit about pouring alcohol. So what I have here is a, an empty bottle that I filled up with water, just to demonstrate this. Uh, I have just a basic red party speed pourer. So this is called a speed pourer, meaning that um, instead of opening a cap, measuring it into something and pouring it into a drink, you can with some practice, accurately pour just straight from a bottle. Um, when you grab a bottle to pour, you're going to want to grab it by the neck. A lot of people make the mistake of pouring from here first and just kind of tipping it in. Um, that will make you look a little more amateur. The way that you would do it if you're a bartender is you would grab it by the neck here, sometimes even putting your, your index finger up there for more control and you turn it almost all the way upside down, so it'll look something like this. Okay. Um, when you are done, a little bit of a twist can kind of help the, the flow to stop. Like that. And then, the other thing to know is that you're measuring usually by ounces, right? So, um, you will use what's called a four count. And this is a little bit different for everybody, depending on how fast you count in your head, uh, what kind of tips you're using, because some of them are different and different liquors are different. But you generally get pretty used to it. So for me, a four count ounce is something like this. One, two, three, four. But this is uh, six in practice. And to be honest, I haven't been practicing my speed pouring for a while because I haven't been uh, bartending at any restaurants or anything like that, so I've just been slowing down and making things for myself and for you guys. So let's test it out, actually. I'll test out my four count. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that was a four count. And I'm going to see if it's an ounce by pouring that into my jigger with the one ounce side. Boom. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll zoom in a little bit. perfect ounce right there. Okay, so that was it for me. So, um, like I said, it takes a little bit of practice to learn what your, what's your four count. So, you know, you just keep pouring and, and pouring it into a cup. You know, I, I would definitely suggest getting some water and not wasting alcohol when you're practicing. And you would just go one, two, three, four, and then see if that fills up the the outside of your jigger, or if you have a shot glass. Sometimes you'll be off, but that's okay, because it's all practice. There's a tiny, tiny bit left in there, just a drop, so it's a little bit over. Uh, but then that's what you're going to want to do. So say something calls for uh, two ounces of tequila, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. here and two ounces tiny bit left over so what is this is telling me right now is that I'm being generous and I'm over pouring a tiny bit so I'll speed up my count and see if I can do it again so we'll do another two ounces one two three four two two three four Okay, 
What else? Two ounces. I spilled a little bit on here, but that would totally fit in there as well. So that was better. That was like my two ounce. Um, this gets really important when you're doing multiple ingredients. So if you're doing, you know, say, uh, what a Cosmo, if you're doing one and a half ounces of one liquor, one ounce of, you know, one ounce of triple sec, you could do them at the same time and just let go of one at one time. So say this was a, um, say I'm doing one and a half ounces of this and I'm doing one ounce of something else. I could do it like this. I could pour both of them. One, two, three, four, take the other one away, and then finish with that one. Had a little air bubble in there, so that wasn't quite accurate. Okay, so that's basically how you speed pour. I want to show you what it looks like when you pour shots, though. Um, if you're pouring them directly into a shot glass without any um, chilling or anything like that. So I have a pretty quick little set of shot glasses here. These are um, 1.5 ounces. So this is going to be, if in my counting, it'll be a six count. They're a little hefty. Um, so you're going to want to line them up side by side. And the really cool thing about speed pours is that when you have it upside down, if you give it a little bounce, it's what's called a bounce cut. So you uh, bounce it, you push it down, and it creates an air bubble in here, which stops the flow for just a, just a fraction of a second, so you can move it to the next one. So you go like this. My last one didn't work out too well, but you get the picture with these first few. Uh, this tip is pretty haggard because I pulled it out of the other bottle that I was in with pliers. <laughs> so it's it's got some internal damage, but that's basically the point. So a few shots there, tiny bits built on the bar, but nothing major. And bounce cutting between them. Um, you can go straight across if they're close enough, but um, bounce cutting is pretty cool too. I can show you here what uh, what the bounce cut looks like without moving it, so you can see. Of, of speed pouring. Okay, in this clip I show you how to shake a cocktail, and I got in front of the camera this time so that you can see what I'm doing. I have my cocktail represented by water in my mixing glass, and I'm just trying to get some ice from one shaker to another, and then I struggle with that and realize that I can just use this shaker that already has ice in it instead, because I'm dumb. I mix the ingredients in the glass and then pour them into the shaker tin. And when you put the two together, you want to do it at an angle, kind of like a banana shape. Give it a nice firm smack on the back to make an airtight seal. As you can see, no water escapes. Um, and then you just give it a nice hard shake. And you want to do this so that the opening in the glass is facing you. If any water or any uh, cocktail comes out, it gets on you and not your guests. And you can shake any number of ways, one-handed or two-handed. And then you break the seal by hitting it with the heel of your hand, right at the little seam where the glass and tin meet. Now, if you have a Hawthorne strainer, you can use that. Just put it on top of the shaker tin. Use your index finger to hold it in place, and just dip it over into the glass to pour. If you want to use a fine strainer, it's pretty simple. You just put the fine strainer above the glass and then pour through that to catch any excess pulp or ice shards. Alternatively, if you don't have a Hawthorne strainer, which you may not if you're in a very busy bar or something like that, you can use some little tricks like putting the glass inside and just making a small gap for the 
cocktail to pour through. The way I like to do it sometimes is put the back of the glass into the shaker, and that actually helps keep a lot of the ice out when you're pouring. Um, when you're pouring from the shaker tin, it's helpful to shake it a little bit at the end just to get all the excess out, and then give it a nice flick with your wrist to make a nice clean break. Okay, so the last thing that I'm going to show you here is just how to stir a drink. Remember, we're going to use our bar spoon for this, so it's long and can get to the bottom of a drink like this. Um, the general rule with shaking versus stirring is that if a cocktail has opaque ingredients, meaning cloudy ingredients such as syrup or uh, fruit juice, like lime juice or lemon juice or orange juice, cranberry juice, uh, or any sort of cloudy ingredients, you're going to want to shake it. If it just has uh, alcohol only, like spirits only, such as a Manhattan or any other type of martini uh, that doesn't have any fruit juice in it, you're going to want to stir the cocktail. This is mostly aesthetic because it'll make it less cloudy when you serve it. Um, there's other arguments about it, like bruising the spirit if you shake it, but nobody really cares about that. People care about that, just not the right people. So I'm just going to use some of the ice that I have left over from shaking, pour it into the glass. So normally when you're going to uh, stir something up, you want to fill it up pretty much all the way with ice. I'll pour in my water here. And when you, let's see. I'm going to switch the camera to the other side so that you can see this better. Prepare for motion. Okay, that's better. You'll see what I can, be able to see what I can do better. You can see what I'm going to do better. <laughs> My words. Okay, so when you insert the spoon, you want to do it down the side like this. And remember, normally this will be filled all the way up with ice. And the motion is this. You're not stirring it like a batter or something like that. You're going around the outside of the glass. So the, the flat edge of the spoon is pretty much always in contact with the outside of the glass. In fact, doing it up here like this is a good way to practice the motion that you need. And you'll also do a little bit of up and down like this. And that's it. Um, if you were swizzling a drink, if it had like a crushed ice, like a, I don't know, some sort of tropical drink, you might do it like this. But that's uh, less common. Usually you're going to stir it up like this. want to do it for a nice, nice long time until the outside of the glass gets nice and frosty. Alright, so that was my uh, bartending tutorial crash course. If you want some more tutorials uh, bartending wise, aside from just, you know, the normal mixology episodes, let me know. Um, I like to help out. Oh my god, okay, it's playtime with my dog now. She's going crazy. Let me know what you would like to see and uh, maybe I can help out. Bye guys.